Um, I'd like to now invite our third speaker for this panel, Mr. Elko Hoekstra, uh, the CEO and Chairman of the Executive Board of Royal Vopac. Good morning, everyone. Ladies, Excellencies, gentlemen. Put on my glasses. Intuitively, we all know the value of trust. Even if all rationale criteria are met, trust is the key factor in deciding for or against following a new path. It's the foundation on which partnerships are built, people and cultures unite, teams melt, achieve results that might stun and amaze. I'm sure that all of you have stories about this. Since our earliest predecessors joined forces back in 1616, and throughout our history, Vopak has been involved in a range of partnerships around the world. Today, we're honored by our partners in 35 joint ventures around the globe. So I have a few stories of my own, a couple of which I would like to share with you here today. One is set in our hometown in Rotterdam, where Royal Vopak is headquartered. And some 20 years back, two company executives, including my predecessor, met over dinner and they decided that strategically, the Netherlands needed an import facility for gas. They shook hands afterwards. And with this, discussions between the companies ensued, and a joint venture was formed. And in 2011, Gazuni and Vopak commissioned the Gas Access to Europe, or the Gate Terminal, as it's known today, on the sandy piece of newly reclaimed land on the tip of the Maasvlakte in Rotterdam. This 1 billion euro project certainly took a lot of engineering, planning and perseverance. And all these involved with the project realized that the initial handshake between the two executives and their belief in both companies' capabilities and their commitment particularly to seeing the project realize allowed for all obstacles to be surmounted and the project to be carried to completion. This first emotional handshake was the foundation of the project. Another story is set here in the Middle East, which is dear to me as I served in Fujira for three years at the beginning of this millennium. Before the joint commissioning of Vopak Horizon Fujera terminals by various parties, including the government of Fujera, the Emirates National Oil Company, and Kuwait's independent petroleum group, Fujera was primar primarily an anchoring bay and center for shipping services from repair and supplies to crew changes. There were no jetties, there was no land storage, and just one small refinery. So what started the terminal project was, I think, a common belief that Fujira had a role to play as a regional and global hub outside the Straits for bunker fuels, crude and oil products, and today, gas as well. We were confident that we could carry this out together, and which we did. So today, our vision of Fujira has come true, and I must say, even beyond our wildest expectations. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's this notion of true partnership that I'd like to develop with you today. And I look forward to your comments and discussions afterwards. But please allow me to say a few words first about Royal Vopak. We've celebrated our 400 years company history just a few years ago. And that was the perfect occasion to do some real soul searching on why it is what we are doing. So we asked ourselves, what is our relevance to society today and in the future? What value do we add for the industry and for our customers and partners? Our answer is that we are storing vital products with care. We enable global flows of chemicals, oil, gases, fuels, and biofuels, storing them as liquids and gases and making them readily available in key ports and petrochemical parks around the globe. 
Society expects us to do this with care. Care for society, health and well-being of our employees and contractors. Care for the environment and care for the communities in which we operate. You in the chemical industry are manufacturing the vital products that we store. Products that enable people to build and insulate their homes, drive ever lighter cars, use their phones, dress and wear protective clothes, safely carry water bottles that can be recycled. Products that are vital to our daily lives. So we as FOPAC are proud to be serving your petrochemical complexes and are keen to continue facilitating these flows and support the growth of this industry. This is why we're eager to continue developing industrial terminals at the heart of petrochemical parks and complexes. And this is where we see true lifetime partnerships being created. Our partnership with SABIC is one example that I'm particularly proud of. In 1995, SABIC offered us to operate and maintain the PCQ1 assets in Al Jubel. We felt honored and decided to go for it, even though our business model is to develop and operate terminals that we own. After nearly 20 years, Sabic and the Royal Commission of Jubil and Yangbu supported the formation of a second joint venture to develop the assets of PCQ2, including the supply chain assets of the multi-dollar Sadara project. The joint venture has, re has rendered results, and we now serve the largest Sadara project and help support flows for SABIC in other parts of the Jubil industrial complex. And in the meantime, we are supporting SABIC's growth ambitions around the globe by providing logistics in Rotterdam, Antwerp, Singapore, China, the US Gulf Coast, and elsewhere. And the latest addition, which was mentioned also this morning, will be the industrial terminal to serve the new Corpus Christi complex for ExxonMobil and Sabic joint venture in the United States. Of course, the team worked hard in Jabil and gave the best to make the corporation work. But the key factor for success, in my view, is that both Sabic and the Royal Commission, as well as Sedara, entrusted us with a mammoth responsibility and decided to let us in the heart of their operations and strategy. This decision allowed us to form a partnership and create value together. So I'm truly grateful to Yusuf Albanyan and his predecessors, the Royal Commission and Sedara Management, for their continued support. In essence, it is this kind of trust that allows a company like ours to deliver our expertise in designing, building, and operating industrial terminals over more than a half a century. It enabled us to realize significant improvements in operation of petrochemical complexes worldwide. Today, we operate 15 dedicated industrial terminals spread across the US, Europe, China, the Southeast, and the Middle East. They serve refineries, crackers, and chemical plants for their feedstock and rundown needs. We found that the best design and operations were witnessed, actually, when we were allowed to put our expertise to optimal use. And this happened when we were allowed to connect with the design teams at the very heart of PetCam projects, starting as from the formative stages of the projects. I very well realize that sponsors not exposed to such arrangements, may view allowing third parties entering or controlling such strategic assets that the entire facility will rely upon as risky. And I fully appreciate that new partners will not get that position just for free. They need to earn it every day. So my job is to ensure that my company earns that trust that allows us to build these partnerships. My point is, is that all the PetCam projects being developed in this region, it is paramount that the industry sets up partnerships with third-party specialists to benefit from their core experience. And this is particularly true for supply chain and logistics assets. 
because there are a few critical aspects that must be kept in view of the real value that needs to be captured. Firstly, while investment in such infrastructure is a small portion of the total site project costs, the impact of a less than optimum industrial terminal design is felt for decades and eroding much of the total project's value. Second, and most importantly, engineering firms, they tend to approach a terminal design from the perspective of the manufacturing process, aiming to evaluate, aiming to evacuate, excuse me, the products. As a consequence, we've observed examples of terminals in the industry where assets were either over-designed or which were simply underperformed, leading to the cumbersome operational experience. In contrast, an industrial terminal specialist designs for efficiency of the whole supply chain. This includes optimizing vessel traffic and jetty efficiency, ensuring room for future growth and securing business continuity. Let me give you a typical and very practical example to make that clear. Turnaround shutdowns are commonly built in the initial design and planning of PETCAM complexes. In order to ensure that maintenance can be performed periodically with minimum disturbances to the production process and to customers. Such planning often gives lesser consideration to the maintenance of tanks and does not consider that reality that during planned shutdowns and turnarounds, tanks are normally full to provide con to continuity of supply. This results in poorly planned and unplanned outages, safety incidents, unreliable delivery of products, and ultimately, all this leads to a lower value for and valuation from customers. However, with good discussions among partners, such pitfalls can be overcome. Proof is the recently completed project in Pangarang, in Malaysia, which serves the new $20 billion refinery and pet camp complex of Petronas and Saudi Aramco. Thanks to our partners' confidence and commitment, the integration of terminal assets with all the plants are at optimum level. So to conclude, when we compare some of the 15 industrial terminals with our other third-party terminals, we see significant efficiency and cost gains. Our top industrial terminals achieve twice the throughput per cubic meter at the terminal, twice the volume on a per cubic meter, on a, on a, on a per FTE or employee basis, which results in up to 35 lower operating costs per ton handled. In other words, industrial terminals are achieving high throughput, delivering lower unit costs to our partners and customers. Before concluding my remarks, I would like to really share a few thoughts on what I see as the most pressing challenge for our industry as a whole. And a lot has been said on this subject already. But also we believe that society demands us to improve safety and sustainability including our response to climate change, while also reaping the benefits of the digital age. One major challenge is to develop low-carbon energy in feedstock, and we see a growing role for hydrogen. This conviction was backed up by the International Energy Agency's first hydrogen report, which was issued in June. In my view, we will witness, in time, the gradual development of local, regional and global hydrogen flows, much like the developments of the global LNG market which we've seen in the last 10 years. The hydrogen will flow from the best renewable energy production areas to new hub areas, with growing hydrogen demand, among which the port of Rotterdam today is taking a leading role. Together with a range of different partners, we are currently exploring various solutions to develop hydrogen supply chains and the transportation of hydrogen. Partnerships throughout numerous supply chains will be more important than ever to achieve a low-carbon economy as no com company nor country can clear this gigantic task by themselves. A final aspect I would like to mention is the need for partnering for digital transformation. 
which I believe will be key to further improve safety and foster sustainable growth. The pace of technology change requires to act now in order to continue adding value to the increasingly efficiently supply chains of tomorrow. Digital technology will allow the terminals of the future to be highly automated, digitized, agile, and more, most importantly, transparent. They will generate enormous amount of near real-time data from many sensors attached to various elements of the terminal infrastructure from pipes and tanks and pumps. All the high quality real-time data that those sensors generate will enable systems to immediately detect flaws and defects. This will lead, as being said, to more safety, more sustainability, higher efficiency and therefore a better service. In this digital future, the relationship between terminal operator and its customers and partners should strengthen further. And this is why we've embarked on what we call the complete digital transformation of our company. Eventually, our customer system should be highly integrated with ours, allowing to optimize not only our own operational processes, but most importantly, the customer supply chains. So established partnerships will be the first ones to benefit from such mutual cooperation in the industry. And greater transparency and timely information will assist in sharper decision making and more agility to cope with operational market and other business challenges. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we see a lot of potential for building better infrastructure around the world, including here in the Middle East. I have a deep respect for the fact that some key players in this region have committed to pursuing that goal, not only in this region, but also on a global basis. Embracing true partnerships will unleash greater potential of these successful projects. So this is very much possible if we first seek to build trust and a common vision for the future. I'm looking forward to expanding these discussions on partnerships and building new ones and allow to create more value for our companies and ultimately for society. Thank you very much.